and welcome to the Science Fiction Rating System Preview Week. This is the podcast where we rate every film from 1 to infinity, every science fiction film, sorry, but this week we don't do that. Instead, we preview three films. We watch the trailer, we go through a synopsis, and we think, hmm, we don't know. Uh, and at home, you can watch along with the trailers in the comments of this podcast, or on the website, or wherever you're listening. You, you can get to them. And, uh, yeah, that's basically it. I am joined, as ever, by Chris Redding. Howdy doody. How's it going? Good, thank you. Yourself? Yeah, pretty good. Um, I went to the... Uh... Barbican sci-fi exhibition this week. I forgot to mention. Nice, nice. Yeah. Let me just introduce Alex Humphrey. No, don't, Humphrey. don't. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I was listening as well, to be honest. I'm interested. Keep going, Sorry, Alex, Chris. you can't come no, in. No, no, no. Chris is this. talking I'm, about this. Yeah, no, no, go for it. Go for it. <laughs> no, no, keep talking. I was interested. I, was just, I just went off into... <laughs> <laughs> Let me model look for a while. <laughs> yeah, they've got, they've got a great exhibition of uh, science fiction paraphernalia at the Barbican in London. Oh, nice. I saw the... Original alien spacesuit. That's Ooh, pretty good. Nice, nice. Uh, they've got spacesuits from Star Trek The Motion Picture. Ooh, um, yeah. Sunshine, that's a good spacesuit. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. remember those? They're all like yeah, tin foily. Nice. nice. Uh, uh, an Interstellar. Yeah, it's it's got it's great stuff. And nice. Miniatures, okay. loads of Geiger shit. Uh, yeah. It's that sounds pretty good. Really good, yeah. Right I'll then, carry on. That. <laughs> <laughs> also Alex Humphrey have you seen any science fiction paraphernalia this, this uh... well, well no but I forgot to mention as well that I saw T2 3D uh, the other week so which is going to be coming mm-hmm. out soon so uh, I was uh, how was the 3D should we do you, want, do you want me to tell you do you want to talk about it just a little bit yeah um, how 3D I, was well, for the, it. Go for it. it was introduced by Robert Patrick so T1000 were there that oh was, wow that was really good he told oh yeah some, I saw the picture of that yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. he told some very funny stories about um, he said that the bit you know the scene in the corridor where they first face off against each other uh, and yeah. uh, Arnie's, Arnie's trying to throw him against the wall but the whole and yeah. he said when they were on set and um, they, they, James Cameron was talking through and he was just like well you know the thing is, Arnie, you know, the T-1000, he's, like, made of heavier metal than you, so you can't lift him up. Like, he's a he's a heavier thing. And uh, Robert Patrick said uh, Arnie wasn't really down with that as an idea. Like, he basically <laughs> just wanted to throw him. I think he didn't really understand the concept that he wasn't stronger um, as well. And the other well. interesting thing he said is, you know, they're, they're, the, the, the classic scene where they appear naked um, at mm-hmm. the very beginning... They actually filmed that last, and they did it deliberately so both him and Arnie would stay in peak physical shape because they both knew they would have to be <laughs> butt naked at the end. Oh, so, wow. Yeah, so he said when he was sitting in the makeup chair, Arnie would walk in and lift his top up and be like, good abs, like that, and uh, check him out. <laughs> yeah, but no, I thought the, uh, the transfer is amazing. Transfer spectacular. Just seeing it for how amazing it looks. It looks so yeah. fresh, so sharp. Looks great. The 3D worked well enough, you know. I, I guess the bits of the spikes on his arms. Yeah, yeah. I, I, it wasn't amazing. I, no. I have the thing with I have this thing with 3D where sometimes it sometimes it's too good and you almost forget it's in 3D. And it's such a good. I, I, well, without saying, I really enjoyed the film, and I was kind of a bit like, oh, is this still in 3D? Am I still, you know, yeah. like? So it's a bit of a gimmick, but to see it cleaned up like that is well cleaned worth up. it. So when it, I think it's coming out in August, but. Uh, Hey, maybe we'll brilliant. Maybe we'll review it then. Who knows? Yeah, yeah, sounds good. Maybe we'll get around to it. Cool. Um, I didn't see any paraphernalia this weekend at all. Oh. but I did. I did go to Berlin, and I hear that um, Hitler's mm. watched the Transformer. <laughs> <laughs> Was that out there causing trouble? I didn't see it. No, I unfortunately didn't get the to see it. The Nazis were very but... forward-looking. They, they were did very, very science fiction mm. weren't they? Uh, the 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 uh, German word for a. ATM or cash machine is Geld Automon, which means gold robot. Really? Nice. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> so that's that pretty was, cool. That's pretty cool. Yeah. We've all so learned gold something. robots everywhere. That's a it's yeah. like a German lesson you've just given us. Well, I guess ge- Geld, gold, is gold, gold, and money is interchangeable. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, correct. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. You're right. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Just restrictive language. <laughs> okay, continue. That's that's yeah. Chris's uh... that, that German bombshell. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the views of yeah. Chris Redding, not of SFRS. Hey, but we're um, not we're not on Earth for this show, are we? We're somewhere no, else. No, no, no. Good thinking. We are high above the uh, the Earth, 
<laughs> as we just said, and we're on Mars. And this week, we're going to change it slightly. Oh. No one knows about this yet. We're going to do a little quiz. Oh. Go for a little it. Mars quiz. Wow, okay, cool. Okay. How big is Mars? And because that's tough, give me a percentage size of Earth. No Googling. I'd say so four fifths of Earth, something like that. Four fifths, okay. So that's like eighty percent. Alex, um, three fifths, I'd say. Sorry, you, you said four fifths. <laughs> sixty, sixty percent of Earth. Sixty percent. Are you four or three fifths? Oh, okay. No, I didn't. I'm no, not no, that good at math, so I didn't know that. Four fifths. Um, it's fifty-three percent the size of Earth. Oh, it's okay. more than you think, isn't it? Okay, yeah. it's small. So you might say that if we were to watch a film with people walking around on Mars, they'd be bouncing around all over the place. Well, for you to say that, Chris, because my next question is, what is the gravity like on Mars? Again, Ooh. in the percentage well, it'd form, it'd be fifty-three <laughs> percent. No, wrong, wrong. Oh, uh, hold on. We, what's the fifty-three percent? Is that mass or is that width or diameter or what? Just, just the size of it. <laughs> <laughs> because okay. if it was mass, so, it'd be the gravity, and if it was diameter, it'd be square. Well, I'll, of the, I'll tell you this. Of the ha, what, ra- hang on, I've got, I've got this a more is detailed answer. Very quick. No, I've got a more detailed answer for the gravity. So gravity. So what percent? You think fifty-three percent of the gravity? Yeah. Why? What's the what gravity? Do you think, Alex? Alex? Oh. What do you think? So, what the percentage of the gravity compared to compared us? to Earth? Yeah. Uh, I'm going to go with sixty again. Sixty percent gravity. Chris? Uh, 75. No, it's 38%. What? Because um, it's got a similar surface land area as us, but significantly less mass. Wow. Oof. Yeah. No it has mind. only hard and elements. My third question is, what uh, percentage of Earth's mass does Mars have? Uh, right, okay. So, sorry, what was the... What you know, it's the... less than fifty-three percent because it's yeah. But what it's... was the 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 uh, gravitational thirty-eight percent? So it's thirty-eight percent. Nope. Twenty-two. Eleven. What? Oh yeah. man, science is mad. <laughs> I've got three more. We'll save those for later on. These. <laughs> well, I've got my facts from Something like bullshit. From I won't say where from in case you Google. No googling because there's more more questions to come. I can't. Okay. That was yeah. a that was a dead heat. You both lost. Um, yeah, Mars won. <laughs> Mars, won. Mars won. always wins. <laughs> so Mars wins in, or it might not win in. That's a spoiler. Let's not do that film. Mars. <laughs> I don't know anything about this film, so I'm going to start with you, Alex. And what film have you got to synopsis for us this week? I have the 2000 legendary director Brian De Palma's Mission to Mars. Which I've is... never seen this film. No, I've never seen Chris, this film. Chris, have you seen it? Uh, I think I have seen it, yeah. Right. Uh, Alex, give us a little overview. What's this okay. film all about? Right, so, uh, yeah, made in 2000, it opens with Don Cheadle's Luke Graham leading an intrepid crew on the first manned mission to Mars. When the astronauts arrive at the Red Planet, however, they discover a strange phenomenon which leads to disaster, killing everyone except Luke, who is left stranded. Back on Earth, plans are made to send out a rescue mission, but what fate will await the new crew heading to bring Luke home? So plot kind of sounds like The Martian, doesn't it? Mm, it does, yeah. <laughs> yeah, like quite a lot. Because I don't see The Martian either, but that really sounds like it to me. Mm. Okay, let's, um, let's, watch, let's watch the trailer, shall we? See what's going on. Hey, what the hell is that? No idea, boss. Is um, Tim Robbins not in that film? Yeah, yeah, I saw him. Oh, well, I just missed him. Let there be life. Uh, nice. That looked crazy. It did look. No, I was not expecting to go down the 2001 angle no, there. No, I do love Brian De Palma. I think he's an amazing director, but he has made some terrible films too. So, yeah, yeah, I'm not sure um, about this one. I'm, I'm hoping, intrigued. Yeah, I'm intrigued at least. Yeah, yeah exactly. 
Exactly. We've lost. We've lost Chris. He's gone. Oh. Is it because of his it's weird? <laughs> so offended. Noise. He's, he's gone. <laughs> he just didn't like the look of it. <laughs> I'm gone. out. I'm out of this um, podcast. Yeah, that's you've gone too far. Okay. <laughs> he's gone to swap up on his Mars facts. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> okay, you're back. Yeah. What do you think, Chris? Um, have you seen it? Yeah, I have. Yeah. yeah oh, okay. okay. Yeah. No Wait. spoilers. Okay, don't say too much. Mm. Looked interesting. I like uh, I like the spaceship and the, the suit. Hmm. Yeah, I like the suit. and the Vangelis. Yeah. I, like that, I like that man shouting again. Vangelis, so man. yeah, that was weird. Yeah, Vangelis. What? Sorry, isn't in the film. Oh right. Yeah, they've just taken that from uh, that Ridley Scott film. Yeah, um, Conquest of Paradise. Whatever it's Conquest called. of Paradise. Yes, yeah. that's the one. A bit of music. Um, yeah, I, I'm I'm cautiously optimistic. Yeah, see what happens. As like you say, Alex Brian De Palma is a name you can sort of trust. Sort of trust. Early De Palma spectacular when he was doing out of uh, sliders. Isn't it? Oh, that was who it was. Yeah. No. Yeah. No, I mm. did wonder who it was. And when De Palma was doing all this kind of riffing on on Hitchcock, it's it's brilliant. Yeah. Scarface, obviously. Yeah. Um, but Untouchables. yeah, exactly. But then there is, a, I mean, Mission Impossible is a bit of a mess, really. And then that was what was so it was oh, so God, commercial. Like yeah. It was so big. I mean, the fact that's why they said it. It was so commercially successful that I think maybe he got a bit too much money and too much power. Maybe it went a bit wrong. Yeah. So we'll see. Though yeah. we'll see. I mean, my main worry is that, like, is this is this nineties or is it early two thousands? It's kind of like a graveyard for bad, bad yeah. sci-fi, isn't it, really? Yeah. Post-Independence Day, you've got years and years and years of just dross. So yeah. <laughs> I'm slightly worried, but never mind. <laughs> um, okay, well, that's that's coming up next week. So everyone at home, get on watching that one if you've not seen it. Um, a second film. Oh, no, before the second film, let's go back to the quiz. Cue the quiz music. Da, 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 da. Is there not a break? We don't do breaks on the preview show. Oh. No, no waiting around. No waiting around. Get on with it. Right. Quiz. Quizzes. So, quiz part two. How long is a day on Mars? And I'll, I'll, I'll take it in, like, hours. One. Oh. So, 73 uh, Alex, Alex hours. Right, okay. Um, Chris? Uh, so that's the speed of it spinning, right? Mm. Um, I think it's... Um, 32, something like that, maybe. Both wrong again. Uh, day on Mars is roughly 24 hours and 40 minutes. Oh. Uh, yeah. Slightly wrong, yeah, slightly different. Weird. Yeah. They call it a sol, don't they, on the, uh, in the Martian? One Do sol. They? That's how they get around all uh, that. Right. They count up and the days. Is it Mongo the minutes? Answer, the answer to that, <laughs> Mongo minutes, the answer to that was in your qu- what you said there, Chris, about how the rotation of it, that's yeah. why it's the same time, because it rotates pretty much the same speed as yeah. Yeah. Earth. Uh, next question, how many days is in a Mars year? Oh, Chris. Well, it, oh God. Um, <sighs> if you get within five days, I'll let you have a point for this one. It's about, I think it's about 1.6 AU's out from well, the I need sun. It in days, please. So if it's 0. 0.6 wider, um, I don't know, uh, 400. Okay, Alex. 382. No, you're both way off. Oh, God. 687 what? days. Oh, okay. I would also accept it 669 souls. <laughs> yeah. And how many Mongo That's, minutes? They're the, the Mars <laughs> days. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't know any Mongo minutes, I'm sorry. I've not done the research <laughs> properly. <laughs> um, okay, and the final question for this round. you still both on no points. Yeah, this is hard. Um, it is hard. What is the average temperature on Mars? Uh, you give me Fahrenheit or centigrade. Mm. Really cold. Uh, Alex, you can go first. Ooh. Oh, oh! It's the average thought... temperature. Av- average. Oh, all year yeah, no, around, yeah, so yeah, because yeah, not as cold as it gets. Okay. Uh, Little clue there. Five. Five degrees. Yeah. In centigrade or Fahrenheit? Uh, centigrade. <laughs> centigrade. All right, Chris. I do mine in Kelvin. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not <got> Kelvin. <laughs> Typical. <laughs> Leaving out the Kelvin. About, I'd say about. T- 
200 Kelvin, probably about minus 70 Celsius. What? Okay, yeah. You're not far off there, Chris. Ooh. The average is mi- minus 60 Celsius is the average. Okay. During the winter seasons, it gets as low as minus 125. God. That's as cold as Toronto, I think. That is oh, I could cold. do with that right now. It's pretty hot here. Mm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, less that'd be a good film Toronto. where like people are teleporting cold air from Mars to Earth <laughs> because it's our global warming has gone so badly it's like yeah, space yeah. balls we just need that giant vacuum cleaner from space balls we could just pump yeah. the air on so they've invented teleportation mm-hmm. yeah for uh, rubbish reasons trans, yeah. you know but it's like a fly and it, in the blink of an you, eye you, and they do if that you put to transport any, thin air no 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 because if you teleport anything it's like a fly it all goes wrong yeah. so all they can teleport is air right yeah so you just teleport air back to earth yeah right, okay. <laughs> that's all they do and then in the end no. it's just a giant scam and they never were doing it anyway they just lied to everyone like the Empress New Clothes <laughs> they're just air conditioners yeah yeah <laughs> it was really expensive air conditioners <laughs> no one steal that that's my next Projects, yeah, nice one. Okay, that's round two of the quiz. We've got one more round to go. Um, so far, I think Chris, I'm gonna give you a point for that one because that was you were quite close there. So you're you're one point up there. Cheers. That wasn't far off. He's uh, right. I'm, about to, second... I'm gonna do. A, I think I might do a, a course online about uh, about Mars. Well, about yeah, about the planets. Yeah, it's too late now. You quit. <laughs> <laughs> Just in case he comes around again. You know? <laughs> yes, it might. Right, our third. Uh, sorry, second film today. Is Mars Attacks um, from 1996, directed by Tim Burton. Back when he was good. Jo- back when he was good, yeah. And directed by Jonathan Gems, who um, <clears throat> was a Burton collaborator for many years. He did work on Batman and Beetlejuice and stuff, and um, not a lot else, no, I think. Hmm. Um, yeah, so I'm doing the synopsis for this one. Uh, basically, Mars Attacks. There you go. Done. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that is it, really, isn't it? I mean, yeah, it, like, without spoiling anything, basically, the Martians decide they'd like to attack Earth, and they attack Earth. And from there, uh, a, a large ensemble of characters get brought into the uh, Martians' plot and have to get rid of the Martians, and everyone from the president to... A Las Vegas bouncer to um, uh, uh, what's his name, Martin Short. <laughs> <laughs> everyone's favourite from in this space to so Michael J. Fox. Like uh, ev- everyone's in this film to Tom Jones. Yeah, everyone gets involved in saving or not saving the world. That is really basically without giving too much yeah, away. It um, is. I'm guessing we've all, all seen this film. Yep. Uh, Base, of course, on the tops line of uh, Mars Tax. Oh yeah. Uh, Trading cards, which yeah. might explain a lot about this film. But anyway, um, <laughs> I remember we had like a mixtape when we were young of all yeah. the best science fiction themes and stuff. Yes, remember that? That was that was a CD from um, the front of SFX magazine. Yes, it, uh-huh. was a good it had one. this it and Clendath who dropped. It had loads yeah, of had lo- stuff on there. Lots of great stuff in there. The Predator theme. Yeah, sounds yeah, amazing. No, it did. It was a, a great. Danny Elfman did this theme, of course. Fantastic yeah. theme. Yeah. Um, from, actually, didn't Danny Elfman do a, one of the themes last week, which I meant to, forgot to mention because it was really oh. weird. I think I think Real Steel he did the music for that. Oh, that is odd. Really odd because that was just like boring, like country rock, wasn't it? Yeah, but that was Danny Elfman. I think. Oh, okay. I think that's right. Anyway, forget last week. We're always looking forward. Let's watch the trailer for Mars Attacks. Once you rise above fear, annihilate, kill, kill. Let's not be too rash. Then you'll be invited. Hi there. Are you interested in the White House? To meet with a new people. It's so perfect that it's happening at the beginning of the new millennium. More powerful than the might of America. I tell you one thing, they ain't getting a TV. More advanced than the brains of Britain. Ladies and gentlemen, this could be a cultural misunderstanding. But be prepared for a few changes. I remember there was a game out on the PlayStation I had. Which was kind of like this. It was like set in the fifties. Um, that's called. Oh yeah, that's oh, yeah. yeah. Destroy all humans. Destroy yes. all humans. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That was really good. Mm. Yeah, that looked great. Weapons in it. It's like an open world, wasn't it? You yeah. like run around like and a, do stuff. Like an anal probe weapon and all sorts of yeah. stuff. 
Um, that looked brilliant. Yeah, join, yeah, join that, Chris. You said that's the last good thing Tim Burton said. Mm. Uh, did um, well, great thing. I was like truly great like, thing. Yeah, because everything else now is is Tim Burton. Well, you know. See yeah. what I'm thinking is when's the last time you saw this film? Long time ago. Yeah, me too. Chris, twenty years ago. Because like, my thought about this is this is either twenty like, years ago. Wow. This is either the point. <laughs> This is either like his, like as you say, his last creative thing, or this is the moment he tips into like self-parody. Mm, yeah, true. That's the, that's what I'm thinking about this. Yeah. I don't know which way it's going to go. No. I'm hoping it's going to be good. I used to love it. Yeah. But you see what I mean? Like it, it looks like the the t- the turning point in his career into. Yeah. No, I see what you mean. Well, it could, it's a bit like um, a bit like Fifth Element. It's it was a long time ago. You know, I remember really, really loving this film and think it was great. But yeah, seeing it again, it's a long time since I've seen it. Yeah, it could disappoint, unfortunately. Yeah. Let's hope not, though. Let's hope not. There's still literally nothing like it, is there really? <laughs> you watch that trailer. No, really. <laughs> how he got away with that, making that film, um, I don't know. With that cast as well. It's, mm. uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm looking forward to watching it. Um, very different sort of Mars. And if I remember correctly, you know in the trailer when the, the Martians go, nice planet, we'll take it. I don't think that's in the film, is it? No, well, that mm. bit where they breathe in the nuclear bomb is a different, yeah. they just laugh. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, they they breathe in a nuclear bomb, and then they've got a high voice, like they've just breathed That's in yeah. a helium yeah. balloon. Yeah, a balloon. Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Well, I am uh, looking forward to that one definitely. Yeah, looks fun at least. Yeah. Uh, that leaves us with one film. But first of all, questions. We've got we've got round three of the quiz. Okay, I'm ready. I'm ready. Okay, this is an easy one. How many moons does Mars have? Two. Oh, oh I didn't uh, think that was easy. Alex? Well, Chris is intelligent and knows about this stuff, so... Uh, I, might be, I might be wrong, though. Okay, I'm going to say three. It was two. Ah! For a bonus point, can you name either of the moons? Yeah. If you've one... played Doom, you might be able to name yeah, one. No. Uh, one is mentioned in Somnus. I can't remember what it was. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> it's probably uh, one from Doom. Phobos. Correct, yeah. Phobos. What's the other one called? Uh, Demos. Oh, okay. Yeah, they're both Greek gods. Yeah. And yeah. they're not, they're quite small moons because they don't they haven't they're not truly round. They have to still look like an asteroid. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> How long would it take you to get to Mars? Obviously, Ooh. depending on what you are. Um, so we're going to go off. Um, the fastest space probe ever launched, which was NASA's New Horizon mission, which travelled okay. at 36,000 miles an hour. Oh, my God. So if you were on board that probe right. and going to set up a house in Mars, yeah. uh, and, and on the Mars be, flats... And I take it it's when <clears throat> Earth and Mars are the closest they can be. Uh, Do you know when they're like next to each other in the orbit? Yeah, that's true. So, okay, okay. So this is the last two questions. Things I haven't got the last question. Yeah. So the one question is when are they closest and when are they furthest apart? Oh God. Okay. Right, okay. Um, are you, are you, have you got this? So have you? These are all true things. I mean, I mean, have you? Is this being given to you, or are you just extrapolating this yourself? No, I, I've got questions from information, but you, right, I've got okay. the, I've got the facts here. Trust me. What yeah. what is what unit of measure are we going by? Because a transfer orbit isn't just the distance between the two planets when they're closest and furthest apart. That's what yeah. but it's not. But it's not like we're going from. If you're just take <laughs> dividing the distance when they're closest and distance. No, I'm not. No, 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 that no, number. no. That's no, this wrong. is that. No, I'm not doing that. No, okay. I've got the actual number from actual things. Okay. So New, New Horizons going there at 36,000 miles an hour. Yeah. We are as close as we can possibly be. How long does it take, Chris? I don't know. Uh, six months. Alex. Uh, a year. It takes 39 days, guys. What? Ooh. Yeah. Oh, okay. And at the most there? furthest apart, why don't we go there? Because well, if you can get on that, the New Horizons already left, I suppose, isn't it? So you can't go on it anyway. So now it's the furthest apart. So you're an idiot. You've made you've timed this really badly. Right. Okay. I should have gone a year, half a year ago, and I can't. I've, I've fucked this all up. Right. I'm still going to go. How long will it take me to get there, Chris? Alex, sorry. Fifty-two days. Nope, Chris. Two and a half years. Nope. Two hundred eighty-nine days. Oh, oh okay. Oh. So after nine questions, Chris wins with one point. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, two. Sorry, you got you got no, you got the you got the you got the moon. You got, got the two moon. Points. Two points. Yeah. You did. 
and the bonus yeah. point for, for Phobos. So uh, well done. Cool. Three out of ten. That's the end of Mars quiz. Did I'll it, send that did, info did to it? NASA though because I'm not sure they've done the sums because it sounds like it's easy to go. Yeah, it does well, sound that, easy, doesn't it? Sounds like they've already got the kit. <laughs> I'll, I'll send you my uh, source um, <laughs> after the podcast. Yeah. Not, not now. Just that New Horizons were... probe is probably about the size of an ice cube or something. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Doesn't matter. It's still going. Yeah. Right, at least one film to go with and if, just for a change, it's a Ridley Scott film because we, we just seem to do Ridley Scott all the time. <laughs> It's done a lot of sci-fi, I suppose, isn't he? Uh, this is The Martian um, from the book by... Who wrote the book? I can't remember. Uh, um, um, oh, fuck. I know this. Uh, Andy Weir. Yeah, there Andy we go. Weir, Andy yeah. Weir. Yeah. And it became a book... Uh, sorry, film directed by Ridley Scott and written by Drew Goddard. Chris Redding, could you please let us know what this is about? So The Martian, as as you've said, it was a book and it was written, uh, I think it was, is it Amazon where you can put your book up for free? Yeah, that's it, yeah. Oh, okay. Self-published, yeah. yeah. And he did, it like, yeah. he did it like a, a chapter at a time. Yeah. Mm. And he, I think he went back and changed some chapters as he went, but he, get, he left himself open to do that. That was part of the premise. But mm-hmm. anyway, the, yeah, so the film was picked up and... Um, it's a basically about a Mars mission which goes wrong in the sense that someone is left behind. Hey, like uh, Mission to Mars. <laughs> yeah, yes. but the, the other people don't die. Uh. Um, there's just one, there's like one person stranded there. So basically he has to, leave, he has to use the base and what's been left uh, yeah. to survive. And it's yeah. all a mathematics and very... The book goes into more detail, like, literally, like, problem-solving stuff. There's, it, Andy Weir did a lot of research into mm. all of this. It's, did you enjoy the book, Chris? Yes. Yeah, it's great. Um, it, you know, they go into a lot more detail than, obviously, what you can cover in a film. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, it's, it's great because it's goes, it goes into these de- geeky, esoteric sort of... Yeah, what, and what, uh, what you can do. Andy Weir seems a really nice guy as well, doesn't he? Yeah, like, yeah. He just basically, he's basically now spends his life just geeking out over stuff. Yeah, I mean, he, got, yeah, he's, I mean, he's gone from money, like so. nothing to yeah. releasing yeah. his book on Amazon. Now he's doing panels at Comic Con, so he's, yeah. he's 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 like he's done well. What's he um, done since? Has he written any more? Or? He's writing one at the moment. Oh. I can't remember what it's about, but he's he's got another one on the way out. Yeah, the Plutonian. Yeah. Um, yeah, <laughs> maybe. Um, but yeah, it's 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 a super film. It's you know it's a problem solving. It's based probably like the Thinking Man's Armageddon. Oh, do you know what I mean? Like it's okay. It's it's well, problem let's solving. Not, let's not to, big um, words. to to save uh, save someone. But it it's yeah. great. Save your opinions. Yeah. Um, his new book's called Artemis. And it's out in November. By the way. Oh, okay. Um. Right, let's watch the trailer, shall we? I'm entering this log for the record. This is Mark Watney. And I'm still alive. Obviously. I have no way to contact NASA or my crewmates. But even if I could, it would take four years for another manned mission to reach me. And I'm in a hab designed to last 31 days. So, in the face of overwhelming odds, I'm left with only one option. I'm going to have to science the shit out of this. I don't like Jessica strong, Chastain. Do strong cast, no, I don't like uh, Yeah, no, I really don't like her, though. I really don't like her. But, yeah. But, no, good cast. Weird, a uh, couple of comedy people in there, randomly. He does that now, I lo- Ridley. I love Jeff Daniels. Yeah. Sean yeah. Bean. Is Sean Bean in it? Yeah. Oh. I didn't know it's stuck on Mars, the bastard. <laughs> <laughs> bastard. <laughs> um, Alex, have you seen the film? No, I haven't. I heard good things about it, though. Uh, have you read the book? No, I haven't read the book. I'm willing to give it a go. Um, yeah, we've had some ups and downs with Ridley, but, you know, <laughs> have, yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go in positive And, uh, yeah, I heard good things, so I hope it lives up to, to that. But I've not got. it wasn't massively hyped or anything, I don't think. Um, I'm not going to actually say about my experience this film until next week because of spoilers. Okay. Um, but yeah, uh, suffice to say, it's a film and a book. And <laughs> so if we were doing charades, <laughs> you'd have made that's a what we of could actions. do. Yeah. <laughs> film, book, 
Yeah. And then you could do Matt Damon. Uh, <laughs> you could do like a planet, and then point to the colour red, and then yeah. you could like push someone, like shun them. Yeah. Ma shun. Yeah, that's good. No, that's yeah. good. Like that. Yeah. I'd have got that. That's next week's quiz. We're gonna play. We're gonna play audio charades <laughs> next week. <laughs> <laughs> Oh dear. <laughs> um, and Chris, obviously, you've seen it with the book. Yes. Um, I don't reveal your feelings, but I can. I can guess them. <laughs> <laughs> so well, I don't know. That's... I mean, yeah. I, um, I'm, oh, okay. I'm, well, don't say. Let's keep those cards really close to your chest. There. No, that's true. You're not. No. Yeah. Um, reveal. Don't reveal anything yet. Um, if you're listening at home to find out what we thought, you'll have to join us next week. Yeah. Um, when we'll be rating these films and adding them to the list. The list which is now 36 films strong. What's at the top and the bottom? Top is Aliens by James Cameron, followed by Star Wars Episode Four, and then Jurassic Park. The bottom, had an entry last week, uh, Dead Bottom is a scanner darkly, still, still down there. <laughs> at 35 is a new entry, it's Michael Bay's Transformers. Um, at number 34 it's Divergent yeah. and then Ridley's, Ridley's just out above there now he's creeping up Prefus yeah. is creeping up to 33 but um, yeah so um, as ever get in touch Twitter at SF Rating Systems Instagram at Science Fiction Rating System Google us go to the website sciencefictionratingsystem.com share send it, us share email it. share like follow subscribe um, send us emails yeah. at mail at science fiction no sorry science fiction rating system at gmail.com uh, do all these things. Our website's lovely now. It looks really good. It is rather nice, isn't yeah, it? It's yeah, it's lovely. Uh, an up- dynamically updating ranking system, and everything's very yep. sort of posh. So uh, good. Pop in. Um, any other thoughts, gentlemen? Well, we did say this, but there is a you know uh, uh, we're not going to do the other massive Mars film, but uh, I'm looking forward to doing that someday soon, hopefully. John, and of course, you mean John Carpenter's Ghosts of Mars. Yes. Mm. <laughs> I wouldn't mind. I haven't seen that for a long time. I'd give that another go. But yes, yes, that's obviously what I mean. <laughs> uh, any final thoughts, Chris? No, no. I'm uh, I'm ready to go and watch. I think I can. Th- hopefully, we're going to get a better week than the last two weeks, aren't we? It's been tough going through the Teen Week and Giant Robot Week. I think Teen Week I mean, was hard. Yeah, I liked I mean, the robots. We've got a but... comedy. I think we should always try and get a comedy film in, like Mars yeah. Attacks. Um, yeah. Because it's, it's There aren't good many vibes, good it? comedy science fiction films, mm, are there? No, exactly. No, no it's hard. With Evolution? Nope. Oh, yeah. Mm, mm. Galaxy Quest? Oh, I like Galaxy, oh, I like Galaxy oh, Quest. Yeah, come on now. Um, um, there's, a new, uh, th- there's a new thing coming out like that, isn't there? Um, Seth... Pixels. Seth, what's he doing? <laughs> oh dear! You know what the, the best the best comedy science fiction film is what? What? Actually, I, I'm going to say it off air. Keep round. Keep. No, it was, oh, that's it was rubbish. I'll keep it in suspense for everyone at home because okay. it might reveal too much about the list. But um, join us next time. Join us sometime in the future to find out what the best science fiction comedy film of all time is. For now, uh, I'm Sam Draper. Good night, Alex. Good night, Chris. Cheerio. See you next week. Bye. Bye.